so we have a Pac-Man game that now has a ghost in it. Wonderful. Apart from the fact that the ghost is a little thing to do now is to add some code to our Pac-Man game that will get the ghost to move around our maze. But importantly, what we need to do is to make sure that our ghost is moving randomly. We don't need to know its exact route or where it's going next. It needs to be unpredictable. So for that, we need to put in some random what we're going to do to begin with is make sure we click on our ghost sprite. Now there's no code in there at the moment, so we're going to start by adding in with events and grab the green flag so that when the game begins, this is what's going to happen. So the first thing we want to do is to make sure that the ghost is in the same starting position every time a new game is run. A bit like Pac-Man always jumps to the beginning location. So for this, position the ghost where you want it to be. I'm starting at the top in the middle here. So once you position the ghost where you want it to spawn or start, then go over to motion and find the go to X and Y. And these numbers here will be the coordinates of wherever you've positioned the ghost. Now it's really important to remember that if you change your mind later on and decide you want the ghost to start over here or something, well, you'll need to change these numbers. The quickest way of doing that is to simply move the ghost where you want it to begin and then grab another of these go to blocks and swap them over. So this is where I want my ghost to begin. But which way will he be facing? Well, we don't want him to always start the same way. We want him to choose a random direction. So for that one, we will need him to choose a random number, first of all. Uh, let's say a random number between one and four, and then those numbers, one, two, three, or four, will turn into north, south, east, west, or up, down, left, right, whatever you want to think of them as. So in order to get a random number, we'll need somewhere to store that random number. So that'll be a variable. I'm going to click on make a variable, and this is only for this sprite only. This is only going to be for the ghost. So I'm going to call this direction. There we are. And then click OK. And now we've got this set direction to. Uh, put that underneath there. Uh, now this actually um, does show on the game here, but this isn't something we need the user to see. Uh, the score, yes, we want that to be visible, but we don't need this here to be visible. So on the left hand side, we're going to untick this direction block here. So we've got the direction there. And now what we need to do is instead of having zero in here, choose a random number between one and four. So let's go to operators. Here's our pick random. Now currently it says one to 10, so we'll change that so that it is one to four. And now we need to ask a question. We need to know whether that random number that's stored inside the variable called direction is a one. If it is, then we're going to change the direction to up. If the number inside direction is a two, then we're going to change it to look right. If it's a three, down, and if it's a four, left. So we're asking that if question a lot. So we're going to have the if block down here, and we need to ask if direction is equal to one. So again, in operators, we need our equals box, and we need to know whether directions, that's the variable on the left. Let's get variables, drag direction into the left hand box. And is that equal to one? If it is, then we're simply going to point in the direction of up. So we'll point in direction zero degrees or up like that. Now, of course, the uh, possibility is that direction won't be equal to one, it might be equal to two. So let's duplicate this if block and move it underneath and ask that question. If direction is equal to two, what will we do? Well, then we're going to look to the right or 90. Then we need to ask the question, if direction is equal to three, what do we do? In this case, we'll move down or 180. And finally, we need to know if 
direction is equal to 4. And if it is, we're going to look to the left, or negative 90. So this block here, this uh, section of code we've got here, from the set direction 2, and then these four questions here, uh, this is all helping us to choose a random direction. Now there are, oh I can just see something which you may have spotted, looks as though our ghost is a little bit um, tired. It seems to have laid down. Uh, when you click on the code, it does randomly, or it does run the code. And of course, the only thing it does is choose a random direction. And you see, each time I click on this, he is choosing a random direction and facing it. Now, of course, we don't want him to actually lie down or go upside down. So just as with the Pac-Man character, I showed you how to change the um, rotation so that the uh, Pac-Man character can only look left and right, not up and down. We'll do the same with the ghost as well. So with the ghost sprite selected, in this section just on the right where it says direction, let's click on that. And then at the bottom where you have these three icons, we're going to click the middle one, which will lock the ghost. So yes, it'll still be able to move up and down, but it won't actually rotate the sprite itself. So if I was to click on this a few times now, what you'll see is that sometimes, there he is, he's looking to the left, and now he's looking to the right. So uh, he's not uh, rotating or lying down. Anyway, uh, back to what I was saying. The um, code here for changing direction, we'll actually need to use this code about three times. For running in the right uh, direction. Uh, also, of course, whenever he hits a wall, we will need to change direction. And there may be, as we test the game later on, be another direction. So, what are we going to do about that? Well, um, we could simply have this whole block of code and duplicate it and have that whole block of code three times. But that's really untidy. And if you're going to start um, changing numbers, uh, on here, well, that's going to get difficult as well. So that's not what we're going to do. In programming, whenever you get to uh, create a block of code and you think, well, I might actually need this to be used again, rather than copying the code, what we're going to do is put it in its own special named block. And then whenever we want to run the code, we just use that special name. So on the left, we're going to go to My Blocks, and I'm going to make a block, and I'm going to call this Change Direction. And then click OK. There we go. So this new block here called Change Direction is simply what we're going to call all of this code that changes direction. So now whenever we want to run all these instructions, rather than writing out all these instructions every time, we can simply use this new block on the left that says change direction. So now when we look at this code, or rather when the computer looks at this code, we click the green flag, the computer says, oh right, move the sprite then to this position, and then do something called change direction. I can see it's a pink block. I know what that means. It means go and find the pink block called change direction. Ah, here we are, found it. Right, I'll do all these instructions and then go back to the main part of the program. In programming, we actually call this a subroutine. So now we've got the change direction. So at the beginning of that, the uh, character is going to face a particular direction. And we need it to move forwards in that direction, but a random distance. We don't always want the ghost to be moving the same distance every time because that becomes predictable. And we want the ghost to be unpredictable. So we need another variable for distance, which is going to contain a random distance. Let's go to variables, make a new variable. Again, it's for this sprite only and we'll call it distance. Click OK. And now at the beginning here, we're going to set, um, oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, direction. No, no, distance, there we are, that was it. I'm looking over here. We've got distance here now, um, visible. Let's unclick that so that's not visible anymore. And set the distance, let's drop that down. There we go, set the distance to, and we'll have a random number here. 
Now this will be different for you, it'll be different each time uh, you run a game. I've not actually uh, tested this on this particular map, so I'm going to uh, guess somewhere between 10 and 50. But these numbers may need to be changed depending on the size of your sprite, the size of your maze, the complexity of your maze. So that will vary, but play around with those numbers, that's fine. So pick a random number between 10 and 50, that's how far we're going to go. And neat block, because we're going to constantly uh, move a couple of steps as many times as we've said distance. So let's grab the repeat block with a number in it, and we're going to repeat, let's grab the distance variable there, repeat that number of times. So what are we going to repeat? Well, we're going to move a couple of steps. Let's type in two steps there. So now we're setting a distance between 10 and 50, let's say 25. So then we repeat 25 times moving two steps. And of course, we've already set the direction at the top there. Now, of course, the problem is that the ghost might do the same thing that Pac-Man did to begin with and that's uh, have the ability to go through the wall. After all, at this point, we've simply said, go this distance. We haven't at any point said, unless you hit a wall. So let's put that code in there as well. We need to ask another if question here. So we'll go to control, grab the if block, and in sensing, we'll say, if we are touching the color of the maze. We'll click on this color block here, grab the, let me just move that up so you can see that, grab the eyedropper at the bottom and then hover over the blue part of the maze. I tend to like clicking in the middle of the line because if you get quite near the edge of the line, sometimes um, the color can start to fade a little bit and be not quite as accurate. So let's click in the middle of that line there. There we go. And what do we do if we're touching the blue line? Well, we need to move back. So in this case, move two steps back, so minus two. Now, of course, it doesn't matter here what numbers you put in. Uh, the bigger number you put in here, the faster the ghost will move. Um, the lower the number, then the slower the ghost will move. What's important, though, is that whatever number you do choose to put in here is also put in here, but as a negative, of course. So two here and minus two there. Now, all of this needs to go right underneath the move block. So we move two steps forwards and immediately check to see if we're touching the blue color. So this is going to go right underneath the move two steps block like that. Put that in there, and there we go. So now the code isn't perfect. There is one more thing that we will need to do, and you'll see the problem in just a second. Let's go full screen and run this. So I'm gonna run the code and I'm not gonna control Pac-Man, I'm not touching the keyboard, uh, but just keep your eye on the ghost. Now what you can see is the ghost is moving. It's also moving randomly. It's randomly changing direction and it's moving a random distance. But what's the problem? Well, the problem is the ghost keeps stopping. Why is he stopping? He's stopping because you have, or we have put in the code, move 50 times, but we're also saying, oh, but if you hit a blue wall, move backwards two steps. So it could be, as he is at the moment there, hitting a wall, but he's trying to hit that wall 50 times. And so, of course, there's a pause. So what we need to do is to say, if you are hitting a wall, then do two things. So if you're touching the wall, move backwards two steps, but then change direction. Written out again, we can just use the change direction block. Let's go to my blocks, grab our change direction block, and put that right underneath the minus two steps. So this means that if we're hitting a wall, we move backwards, so we're not gonna go through the wall, but then we immediately change direction. Let's have a little look and see how that looks now. So you'll see that now the ghost is going to randomly change direction and move a random distance. And if he hits a wall, he doesn't stop still and wait. He immediately changes to another random direction, which means he never stops moving. 
Now I'm looking at the distance he's traveling, a quite small, um, he's not moving a very long distance, so I might change those numbers between, uh, rather than uh, 10 and 50, which I had before, I might change that so the minimum is 20, and maybe I'm going to change that to, uh, let's try 100. There we go. Let's just run that and see what difference that makes. Let's run it again. And what I'm looking for is slight more smooth movement. There we go. And it's definitely unpredictable. We've no idea um, where he's going to go next, which direction he's going next. So it's impossible for the player to uh, decide, oh, I think I might, uh, you know, just wait for him to complete that little circuit. You don't know if he's going to. Now, of course, at the moment, I've put a very high number at the end there, that 100, which is going to reduce the chance of him stopping right over this gap here. So that 100 may need to be dialed down. I think I'll bring that down to 70. And this is what I mean by you're going to have to play around with this. I can't tell you what numbers will work. It's a case of playing around with your maze and seeing. If the ghost just seems to constantly get stuck in one particular location, then maybe change that top number down. Oh, there we are, straight out. Uh, so that one looks quite good. So we've got our working ghost, and of course, eventually we're going to add more ghosts. So we're going to have more than one ghost in our game. But for the moment, we'll just keep the one ghost. Uh, but we are well, Pac-Man is not going to worry because we can, of course, go straight through that ghost and not worry at all. There we are. We can jump on the ghost there and the ghost doesn't bother at all. So it's still a very safe game. So what we need to do now is to think about how we can change this so that the ghost can kill Pac-Man.